This is the Tallahassee Business Podcast, bringing you engaging conversations with influential members of the community that you need to know. This episode is brought to you by The Health Network. The Health Network is an innovative advertising platform with more than 30 digital monitors and almost a dozen different medical waiting rooms throughout Tallahassee. With a diverse mix of medical practices, The Health Network provides advertisers unmatched visibility to a highly engaged audience while directly connecting with target consumers through static and video ads. To learn how your business can effectively reach over 60,000 patients and guests per month, visit THNAdvertising.com. Well, hello, everybody. This is Sue Dick, president of the Greater Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce. Very excited today to be talking with Keith Bowers with the FAMU Small Business Development Center. Keith, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me, Sue. Absolutely. I, we always feel great whenever we can talk to Keith. Uh, many of you know Keith Bowers and the great work that he and his team do. Uh, a tremendous resource for our business community. And Keith, what we want to do is touch on some of those resources. But first, maybe let our listeners learn a little bit more about you and, and how we're so fortunate to have you in our community. Okay, well, um, pretty straightforward. I, I um, got introduced to Tallahassee when I came here as a freshman and enrolled at the um, School of Business and Industry. And, um, you know, lived here for four years while I attended college. And then after graduating, I moved back to Panama City and started working in banking. And so I um, worked in banking for about six years. I was the uh, director for small business lending at um, the financial institution there. And I started also working as the CRA officer, the Community Reinvestment Act officer for the institution. So I really got a chance to um, work with small business owners as well as low to moderate income families and individuals. Um, and I really had a passion for doing that. But um, eventually, I um, moved back to Tallahassee to go to work at Florida Housing Finance Corporation, where I ran a single family um, home ownership program for the state of Florida, and um, fell in love with Tallahassee and um, been here ever since. Well, and I think that explains a lot as to why you are so great at what you do and provide so much resource and information as regional director for the SPAMU Small Business Development Center. So if we can, let's let's talk about the organization uh, for our listeners to know, based on that wonderful professional history of what you bring to the table, and I've witnessed it firsthand, you are a tremendous asset, so thank you for all that you do. But maybe talk a little bit about your office and the services you provide and, and who might be the perfect client or individual or small business that could benefit from talking to you and your team. Sure. Well, let me give, give you a, a by way of background. We're, we're funded by the Small Business Administration, and we also receive funding from the Florida Legislature. So the first thing that I'd like to say is everything that we provide to small business owners and entrepreneurs has already been paid for. It's at no cost to the end user. So um, we primarily provide customized consulting services for small business owners and entrepreneurs. And it could range from helping them um, put together a business plan, um, doing a feasibility study for an idea that they may have. Um, and for those companies that are already established, we can come in and help them analyze their financials, um, help them identify sources of capital if they're looking to expand. Um, we also help with some HR issues. Um, we do a lot of marketing um, work for our clients in terms of market research and helping them develop marketing plans. One thing that we like to emphasize that is customized. So it's not anything that we're pulling off the shelf. We take the time to sit down and talk to each individual client that comes in, and we try to get, an, uh, a, get a, a feel for where they are, and more importantly, where they want to be. And then we, we make an assessment of the resources that they have and then the resources that might be missing. And then that's when we go to work. We really try to make sure that they have the resources that they, that they need to be successful and quite honestly, sometimes the best advice we can give to um, entrepreneurs is don't quit your day job. If it doesn't seem like it's a feasible or, or viable idea, we're going to tell you that as well. And sometimes that's hard news to hear, but we think we owe that to them. So before you cash in your kids' college, you know, um, college fund or, or your 401k to start the next blockbuster video, we're going to tell you that that's not a good idea. But, um, but again, we, we, all of our services are delivered at no cost and through certified business consultants. I have about, um, we have five certified business consultants that work at the center. 
and we all have varying backgrounds. As I mentioned, my background is in finance. We have someone who has a strong um, background in accounting, marketing, management. So we try to um, make sure that we have the resources to meet the needs for our, for our individual clients. Well, we have seen firsthand you working with businesses as, as a chamber. Our, our hope is to provide resources to our members, and, and you all have really stepped in on many occasions in the past actually having a presence in our building. We'll, we'll talk about that towards the end when we talk about sure. what 2022 looks like. But, you know, you've also talked a lot to our members. We've tried to convene those sessions about certain tools. Can you just give an example for a listener who obviously has just walked through what you've just laid out and thinking of a business plan or feel like they're along the way, but you have some very unique tools that individuals or businesses can use that I think our listeners would enjoy just kind of triggering their thought process. Sure, sure. Um, and thank you for mentioning that, too, because one of the things that we always stress is that, you know, there's a saying, in God we trust, all others must have data. And so what we try to do is provide that data. We subscribe to several analytical tools. We use um, one tool that will actually analyze your financial statements and benchmark you against your peers and competitors within that same industry, just to give you an indication of how well your company is performing. Um, we have a tool called Ibis World that takes a 30,000 foot view of every industry and provides um, um, biannual reports on each industry and they take a five-year look back and a five-year look forward so it kind of gives you an idea of what trends are taking place within that industry which is important not only for those businesses that are looking to start but those existing businesses so they can kind of see down the road and start to prepare for the dynamics of, of that, that specific industry um, we subscribe to a system called um, ARC GIS which is a, a ESRI product so it provides spatial analytics. It, it can help you with traffic counts. It can help you understand what consumer behavior habits are for those specific um, geographies that you plan to attempt to penetrate. So you know we, we like to make sure that we are arming our clients with real-time data and information to help them make those informed decisions. We don't make those decisions. We provide them with the data and information to help them make more informed decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, and it, what is the, the footprint or the area that the data can be pulled from? Is this just a Leon County, or can you go into the surrounding county areas? Um, we can go nationwide, oh, Wow, okay. pulling that data. So, any, so you can pull the data if someone's looking to grow their business locally or within a neighboring county, or if they're saying, I really want to expand and really see what the if they're an existing industry, and they say, okay, I may want to look at other parts of North Florida right, absolutely. or the region. Or if they're looking to launch some type of e-commerce um, segment to their to their business, we can tell them if you're you're looking to try to penetrate the markets in California. Here's based on what you're selling and what they're buying. Here's here's some data to help you you know decide the best route. So if you can if you can you know thinking back to those many uh, opportunities you had to work with clients, is there one question that always seems to pop up that you wish you could tell the individuals ahead of time? Other than making sure you have a business plan or don't quit your day job, is there something that you've learned uh, from your conversations that you've had along the way that might trigger a thought for a listener? Yeah, I think the most common thing is for, for folks to be patient um, in, in terms of really making sure that they understand what they're getting into. Because, you know, um, you don't know in a lot of instances, you don't know what you don't know. And rushing that decision because of some sense of urgency is not really beneficial for you in the long run. So we want to make sure that you give yourself enough time to first take an inventory of what you're bringing to the, the table for your business. You know, what skills might you need to become a better owner or founder? Um, so you really take an assessment of, of what skill sets you're bringing to the table and most importantly, what you don't bring to the table. And so it kind of tells you what type of assistance and, and different resources that you need to make sure your business is successful. So I think a lot of folks, like one thing that we see a lot of times, we have a, a, a client that will come in and say, well, hey, I need a business plan. And um, we ask them, you know, so what, what type of business do you plan to start? And a lot of times it's a service industry. So what do you know about your market? What do you know about your customers? What do you know about your competition? Those types of things that you could be doing on an ongoing basis to you know, kind of fine tune and refine your business model to make sure that when you launch, you have all those questions answered and you're not surprised. Now we don't have a crystal ball, mm -hmm. 
but we there are certain things that we can kind of take out of the, the guessing equation. Okay. And, and to make the next um, action, once you walk through all of that and realize, okay, I am ready, what's the best way, what's the next step to contacting your office or what's the best approach to get those conversations going? Well, the, the best approach is to call us and um, email us or visit our website. Um, our website is www.sbdcfamu.org. And then on that website, there's a tab that uh, says ready to get started. And then you click on that tab and it takes you to our registration page and you register as a client. And within 48 hours after registering, someone from our team will call you to schedule an appointment and we can really start the one-on-one -on -one engagement. Well, I know, you, you know we're talking about the, the overall services provided. I know that you all did a lot with COVID and working with businesses and recovery of COVID. Is there anything you want to let make sure our listeners know that it's still going on because we know this is still over our heads a little bit. Right, I know, and it, it changes on a day to day basis. You know, SBA threw so much um, information out there in such a in such a quick fashion that you know we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what uh, what's next and and what's the best advice we can give our clients. But I will tell you that um, the economic injury disaster loan is still available for those businesses, both nonprofit and for-profits. Um, that, that loan, it's a loan, it's not a grant, it's not like the PPP that was given out earlier, but that is still a viable product for a lot of um, small businesses. You can get up to $2 million and it's financed over 30 years. And if you're a for-profit, the interest rate is fixed at 3.75%. If you're a nonprofit, it's fixed at 2.75%. And those funds are, are readily available. Um, and it, I, I would just say that if, if you're having some issues and you've been impacted by COVID, you know, give us a call. We can definitely help navigate that terrain for you. There are a lot of other resources that are available, you know, from SBA. Um, some of them are still ongoing. Um, like one was the, um, that, uh, the Shuttered Venue Grant. Um, that really dealt with, with um, like places like movie theaters, museums, and other places where people are used to congregating. Um, there is a grant that was in place to help those businesses. And SBA is still sort of thinking about trying to extend some of those or uh, wait, waiting to see you know, um, how much funding may be available in the upcoming um, budget. But I, I still think that we're gonna see some more initiatives roll out from SBA. Okay, well, that's good to know. And again, they can, all that information is available from you and your team. They that's, just go to the website or call FAMU Small Business Development Center. Absolutely. Well, today's an exciting day. We want to make sure we talk about the grant that was received from Wells Fargo to create a yes. small business incubator. So, very exciting partnership and, and maybe let everybody know what that is and what it means for our community. Yeah, well, um, we're, we're so fortunate that um, Wells Fargo actually reached out to us and they said that they wanted to um, support minority and women-owned businesses and they felt that doing it through a historically black college or university might be the best route to take. Um, so they reached out to us and asked us if we'd be interested in applying for a grant. Um, they also reached out to the FAMU College of Law and asked them to do the same. Um, to so businesses could get any type of legal assistance that they might need. So um, we applied for the grant. We found out that we will be receiving um, $100,000. Um, we're having a check presentation ceremony on Wednesday morning um, at our office on, at the FAMU Foundation Building. And the premise behind the Small Business Incubator Grant is different from, um, slightly different from DOMI and what the, uh, the folks, the good people at Innovation Park are doing. Our primary focus is going to be uh, minority and women-owned businesses, starting at a grassroots level and really um, not having any parameters as it relates to any specific type of industry because we realize that, you know, uh, especially coming, working through the pandemic, people are really just trying to figure out what their next steps should be. And that may um, encompass you know, some traditional businesses and some non-traditional businesses. At any rate, we want to be there to help support them. And it's in line with what we already do 
but we are through this grant we have an opportunity to have a, a, a more concerted effort um, by controlling the work environment, controlling the programming, providing the resources, and holding um, those participants in the incubator program accountable. Um, and, and again, just working with them one-on-one um, -on -one and providing some guardrails um, because it's a, a, you know, it's a pretty scary endeavor just to get out there and launch your business. But we think that this is a safe place for those, for those businesses to come, knowing that they're going to be supported with the resources that they need as well as the programming and then the mentorships and then you know we're, we're going to pull in all of our partners so just you'll be getting a call from us as well uh, to help. Well part of it is our, our role right now is to make sure we get the word out about it so uh, great work being done and, and we want to make sure we promote to our members and really anybody in the community any small business that really just is trying to get started and, and trying to move forward so we're happy to Keep, continue to provide information where our listeners can find out more. Well, we appreciate that. Well, Keith, we, we greatly appreciate your hard work and, and again, your friendship. Uh, any parting words you'd like to, to say to our listeners as we prepare for the wrap-up of 2021 and into 2022? Yeah, that's a good segue because, uh, you know, I just looked up and we're in, in uh, past the mid, middle of October. Um, so as we, as we tee up 2022, um, what we are going to do at, at the Small Business Development Center is make sure that we're adding value to our stakeholders in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So, um, as you mentioned, you know, prior to COVID, we had a, um, a, a dedicated day where we were working here at the Greater Tallahassee Chamber. Um, we're going to uh, reinstitute that practice if, if that's okay. Absolutely. We definitely love to make sure that we're here um, being able to provide services, but we're also going to start to reach out and become a lot more engaged. Um, with the Office of Economic Vitality, um, Leon County Research Development Authority, the other two chambers, the Big Bear Minority Chamber, as well as the Capital City Chamber, because one thing that we've learned through working through this pandemic is that one, no one has all the resources, and two, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. And we realize that our position is we want to go far, and we've got some great partners that sit around this community. Um, who have great resources and, you know, we, we really enjoy being able to collaborate and leverage those resources. So that is, that is our main focus because we have an obligation to make Tallahassee a very um, sustainable, economically viable uh, community. And we realize we can't do that on our own. So we'll be, we'll be reaching out to all of our partners and trying to figure out, you know, what is the best way we can come alongside them and, and complement what they're doing. Well, wonderful. Well, we look forward to continuing working together. And thank you for Same everything here. that you do. And again, uh, the website, if people want more information. It is www.sbdcfamu.org. Wonderful. Thank you, Keith. Appreciate right. it. Thank you, Sue. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.